What's up everybody, Ben White here. Welcome to the Tactical Fellowship. The purpose of today's video is to explore the efficacy of the Arc Reactor 43X. It's got a ton going for it, but is it optimum Glock EDC? We're gonna talk about that, and of course, I will dive into the build details at the end. Before we get to that though, how would you go ahead and stick your thumb up YouTube's anti-gun love and hole by liking and subscribing? And you need to go check out my kit page, link above and below, it's where I do all the work for you. Such as reaching out to vendors to secure custom discounts exclusively for viewers of Tactical Fellowship, and so much more more. Check out the kit page and let's head back to the video. Why did I decide to build an Arc Reactor 43X? Truthfully, I've got a lot of big guns and I wanted to build something out that was as short and small as possible. So the tractor beam for this build was certainly the Arc Reactor 43X slide. It is super interesting. And in total transparency, my heart open as a book before you. Everything on this build, my cash money bought. With that out of the way, let's dive into why I think the arc reactor slide is so flipping fascinating. It is short. It's 43X length short, but it's short with the added benefit of a compensator built into the existing length of the 43X, giving you the benefits of recoil reducing compensation in a micro package. It kind of really like, from the side looks like a pug, um, like a snarling pug. So I intend to shoot plus P plus out of this thing. Yes, yes I do. Uh, my loads are about 1300-ish FPS, and you might be thinking, bro, that's wild. Um, that's a good point, but here's the deal. It actually is a super nice shooting gun with a hot load, because the hotter the load, the better a port works. What you have is a supremely small gun that shoots extremely well with powerful rounds. Powerful rounds of which I intend to use in this gun because of what I discovered during testing. So stick around for that. It's going to be important for you to hear and know. Two Taco Bet, you are on the fence with this one. So what else about this ARC build am I really loving? Well, I am also very drawn to the potential of this build's minimal weight and overall capacity. Another way to look at it, and for comparison, let's say you're coming at this with a G43 with Terran plus twos, giving you eight capacity in the gun. Uh, it's going to clock in at around one pound, six ounces. And then you're going to this ARC reactor build that has an RMR on it, that has 15 round shield mags, compensation built into it, and that build is coming in at one pound, nine ounces. So basically you have a 12.7% increase in weight for an 88% increase in ammo capacity. And that is a capacity gain that I absolutely dig when you consider the weight that you're gaining, which I consider to be minimal for that capacity. I also really like direct to slide mounting is the way to go. It just gets rid of one more failure point on the thing. And also the red dot sits really low on the side because of this. But Dear friends, the world of physics and mathematics has unbeatable realities. Scales which much balance at the end of the day. Which brings us to the first big trade-off you need to know and consider. Accuracy. The reactor modification basically removes the first half inch of barrel for the porting, bringing the roughly one and three quarter in actual barrel down to about a one and one quarter in actual barrel. Essentially, this is snub nose revolver territory. So your accuracy expectations need to be honest and perhaps broken here. This is not science here. This is me just eyeballing things. But to me, it looks like the pill is getting about one and a half twists before it's out of that barrel. And because of how it's slinging the pill, your POI is gonna surprise you. The further you get out, the more irrelevant your irons are gonna become and your irons in red dot will absolutely not co-witness with this. Which basically means that this barrel and slide combo must be shot with a red dot to achieve maximum effect. So let's take a quick break from the studio and I wanna head back out to the range with you. Seven round groups with plus P plus at 5, 15, 25 yards and then a special 50 yard grouping with seven rounds to show you how many times I can maybe hit a C zone steal.
Okay, so I'm sure you could have shot those groupings way better than me, but the thing that stood out to me was that 50 yard test. And that's also the test that convinced me to continue using plus P plus in this gun. So previous to that rain session, I had actually attempted that the weekend before using 115 white box at 50 yards and I hit everything but the target. Man, I was all over the berm. So for the dudes in the back that are like for the 43X plus P ammo juice isn't worth the squeeze, you probably are really right for that for a normal 43X, but the 43X arc reactor absolutely allows you to push the hottest ammo and I am I am at the line through the gun and to shoot it well. In conclusion, what do you think? Is this optimum Glock EDC? I suppose truly only you can be the judge of that. For my part, hmm, you don't get it all, but darn it. You get pretty dang close to getting something pretty optimal out of this. It's going to go in my rotation, and I hope I've helped you have the data you need so you know if it should go in yours. So let us dive into the build details, and we'll start at the top and work our way down. Starting at the top, of course, it will be with the Arc Reactor slide for the 4343X. The one I have was Cerakoted in Arc Division's Black Multicam. It's got really nice lines but I think it could use a little bit more bite in that checkering up front. I like how they have a pocket cut on the top of the slide. And if you're new to the G43 line, um, on the website, Arc Division uh, says that you need to buy channel liners, but the 43X doesn't have a channel liner. That is for other slides, but you will need to get some parts because minus the slide, the barrel, and the back plate, it doesn't have any of the internals. Quick note on the barrel. You can see here the crowning on this at the end matches the slide. It's a really strong aesthetic moment up front there. It looks really good. And function-wise, as earlier noted, I had zero malfunctions up the feed ramp with both FMJ and high hollow point. For the red dot on the top, I went with a Holosun EPS Carry RD2. Observations to note to you guys if you haven't used one is that the buttons are way easier to hit than the little bitty buttons on a 507K. In addition, because it's a closed emitter red dot, it's way easier to just wipe the lint off of the back window rather than the back of the front window of the 507K. Small thing, but it kind of matters. You don't have the white Holosun letters all over this thing. It's nice and muted. The iron sights are by night fusion the edges are angled here they won't dig into your side flesh um, these are with tritium and an orange hd post they are in the window um, but i don't mind kit page for the exact model and they stayed put on the gun they didn't shift anywhere so that's always great the trigger is by train with purpose you're looking at the blacked out color version it doesn't come with the trigger bar but the install is super easy it's less expensive than other triggers on the market and then you got the lazy ghost logo here saying i was lazy and i died don't be lazy like me and die train with purpose the magwell down at the bottom here is a Katana V3 for the G43X. It's a very comfortable swell pushing my hand in. It really does complete the bottom. The installation is a plug that compresses against the plug walls. The trick is to not over tighten this thing. Just take the install screw, put a dab of Loctite on there and just get it tight enough. If you over tighten plugs like this, they can push into and expand the plug walls which creates like a speed bump for your magazine, which doesn't allow it to drop freely in or out. Speaking of the mags used in this video, they were OEM 10 rounders and Shield Arms S15 V3. I loaded them to capacity and I kept them loaded for a long time, but they fed uh, FMJ and hollow point trouble free for everything that I shot. And that's a couple hundred rounds. Um, quick note though, the OEM mags, they do not drop free in this setup. I think that it's probably the Shield Arms mag catch. It works great for Shield Arms magazines. They drop free, but plastic OEMs, they needed me to strip them out of the gun. They did not drop freely. Well, my guys and my girls, that's all I got. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Please go visit my kit page. It is your next step. And as always, ride fast, shoot straight, get off the couch and into some tactical fellowship. We'll see you next time.